So this is the Okanagan Lake Dam, where Okanagan Lake meets the Okanagan River. And a guy named Sean Reimer is in charge of this facility. It's up to him to decide how much water to hold back and how much water to let through. And given the fact that our snowpack is a little below normal right now, he starts out the season in holdback mode. The Okanagan is actually one of the higher snowpacks that we're seeing in the province. So, uh, you know, based on that, we may be in less trouble, but that will maybe be around like Okanagan Lake as, as an example. Because uh, we have the ability to capture some of that water and the snow coming in, that gives us a bit of a, a leg up on a lot of different sort of regions. However, where you're going to see the problems potentially like last year would be in the tributaries because, you know, everything may come down early, all the snow, I should say, should come down early. And, uh, but if we start getting a really hot summer or very little rain in June again, again, we may be able to capture a certain amount of water in Okanagan Lake, but the tributaries, you know, that we see that people rely on for a lot of their irrigation or domestic water or, or things like that, you know, they could be in, in bigger trouble. So when you've got conditions like now where you've got snowpacks that are a little below normal, a little below optimum, you are in holdback mode? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, we have very, very modest outflows from Okanagan Lake Dam right now. And right now that our sort of schedule of releases is what we call them, meaning from a week to week, what do we propose uh, is there going to be our outflow, uh, is pretty modest for the rest of the year and right through freshet. Uh, now, that may change if we started seeing, you know, significant precipitation. But right now, based on the information we have, uh, that's our schedule of release. Right. And so um, if, if we don't get much rain or if we get very little and you need to even tighten up, you know, this sort of holdback mode, what sort of cost is that? Uh, what sort of problems does that create downstream? Yeah, I mean, potentially, uh, if we were to go into absolute minimum mode, uh, then, you know, you could see problem for irrigators, uh, particularly the ones who take water directly out of the Okanagan River. I mean, there are some diversions and things like that that might be in better straits, but uh, the irrigators who take directly out of the river and also uh, could be a potential problem for like migrating uh, salmon uh, that come in, start coming in sort of in July. Uh, and, and part of the issue with them too is, you know, the lower we have the water level, if it's warm out, then the water is warmer and that can become a problem for those fish as well. Right. But I guess um, the um, human costs um, and the uh, cost to the uh, salmon are kind of the same. In other words, if you keep a, a certain amount of flow or if you're able to, you're not only solving that environmental problem, but also allowing people who rely on the river uh, to irrigate, uh, you know, you, you keep both, of, both sides of the equation in, in a positive. That's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice from an operational point of view for me that you can sort of solve, yeah. I shouldn't say solve those problems, but help those problems along those or those issues. Uh, and the other piece about it is that the, the impacts to the lake in terms of a little bit of changes to the outflows, going from the dead minimum to sort of a more modest outflow, uh, you know, the impacts to the lake in terms of the lake level pale in comparison to the benefits that you can get uh, from just adding a little bit more water to the Okanagan River and again for irrigators and for fish primarily. Right. You were mentioning earlier that you've made your own personal observation that some of the mid-level um, uh, snowpack um, is it is really noticeably low. Yeah and of course these these um, record-breaking temperatures we've had this last week have, have started to initiate some of the snow melts on some of these some of these sites and so that what you know I've seen some of our uh, automated sites uh, are actually at record low levels and again mainly because they've just started to melt a little bit early so that you know they didn't peak at a, at a minimum low level but maybe they're starting to melt a little earlier than normal. Right. So um, bottom line, though, um, I guess you have to um, sort of factor in uh, the long range forecast and then, you know, let's say an average amount of precipitation and uh, 
patch together the best guesswork you've got and formulate a plan? Is it all, it's all on you in the end, isn't it? Well, I try not to make these decisions in a vacuum. I'm talking to people with the BC River Forecast Center. I've talked to people who are experts in fisheries and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, it's, I guess, a, a lot of it, the final decisions in terms of the actual flows are there. But again, there's a lot of discussions going on. You ever go to bed at night second guessing yourself? <laughs> Doesn't everyone. <laughs> but um, bottom line, looks like, you know, it's shaping up to be a year that's not heading towards calamity at, at this point. No, not in terms of, like I say, our operations. I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we get a decent amount of rain, particularly in June. All right. Uh, you know, I don't want too much, but of course, I'm, you know, cognizant of the other issues going on out there as well that concerning that might be concerned around drought and particularly like the wildfire situation. Right. Let's just hope things are normal. That would be good for you, wouldn't it? Let's hope for normal. Normal, average, uh, if there is such a word anymore. <laughs> Really appreciate this. Thanks again. And we'll be back next year. Uh, thanks for watching Kelowna Now.